Well, once again, a very good evening and a very warm welcome to you all uh, to our midweek prayer meeting. It's really so good to see everyone who's tuned in tonight, and we've got certainly a lot to pray about. So good to see my brother DJ tuning in with us tonight. So we've got much to pray about and much to think about. Uh, we're going to begin our worship of God in a little while, but before that, just a reminder that we have the food bank going at the church. That's all we have. There's nothing else running at the church apart from the emergency food bank. So there is no change in our present circumstances and we're still under lockdown as you all well know. But I'm going to mute everyone except for Eric and Eric will lead us in our worship of God which is Psalm 95 verses 1 to 8 in the Scottish Psalter. So that's Psalm 95, verses 1 to 8. O come, let us sing to the Lord. O come, let us, everyone, a joyful noise make to the rock of our salvation. To the end of verse 8. Then harden not your hearts as in the provocation, as in the desert on the day of the temptation. We'll sing these words to God's praise and we've I've just unmuted Oh, 
our gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father. We thank you for the words that we were singing just now. That, Lord our God, we are the sheep of your pasture. And, Lord, you are the great shepherd of the sheep. And this evening, Lord, we come to you, trusting that indeed each one of us can say, the Lord is my shepherd. And Lord, we look to you to minister to us this evening in our midst, Lord. You know us, Lord. You know our needs. We ask, O oh Lord, for your Holy Spirit to come and lead us, Lord, in this worship, in our service, in every aspect of it, Lord, that you would lead us in prayer, Lord, because we don't know how to pray as we ought. And often, Lord, not only do we not know how to pray, we don't even know what to do, Lord. So this evening, Lord, our eyes are upon you because we don't know what to do in many of life's complexities, perplexities, and hardship, and heartbreaks, Lord. And this evening, Lord, we ask that you would come to us, that you would come to us as you have promised, that you would come to us, Lord, and that you would make yourself known in each heart tonight. Make yourself known, Lord, in our midst. We pray, Lord, that you would minister to each heart, Lord, in their particular situation. We ask, Father, that as a nation, you would help us to look to you. We see the coronavirus crisis, Lord, and it just seems so surreal the way we're being shut off in our homes, Lord, and the way freedom of travel has been restricted in so many ways, Lord, and the way we're restricted in social contact. And yet, Lord, we know that these things are for the best. We do pray, Lord, that you would give wisdom to Boris Johnson and his government and Nicola Sturgeon and her government at this time, Lord, that political uh, differences would be set aside for the good, Lord, and the health and the well-being of our nation, Lord. And our Father, we pray this evening for the rest of the world, Lord, in a similar situation and uh, various uh, administrations are dealing with it, Lord, in their own way. And Lord, we know that nobody has got it right, but we pray, Lord, that you would pull all things together, Lord, to bring hope and blessing and comfort and encouragement in our circumstances, Lord. We think, Lord, of uh, the opportunity that these days have been to preach the gospel and share the gospel and the love of Christ with those we come into contact with in the way that is prescribed. We pray, Father, that the word of God, as it goes out, would take root in every heart, Lord, and that it would bear fruit according to your word, Lord. We do pray for the seed that is sown, Lord, in every heart that the devil would not snatch it, Lord, but, Lord, that you would bring the increase. We pray as the word of God goes out this evening in every home uh, that you have uh, ordained it to do so, Lord, that it would, uh, per uh, it would accomplish, Lord, what your purpose, and that, Lord, you would strengthen hearts, Lord, and minds, who feel perhaps that uh, they just can't go on. But Lord, we pray that you would come into the situation, Lord. Come into their situation, their family, their circumstances, Lord, and right into their very being, Lord, to reveal yourself as the Lord who knows, who cares, who understands, and as the Lord who is not distant. Father God, 
we do play, especially this evening for the heartbroken. We know, Lord, so many heartbroken hearts at this time, Lord. Even uh, uh, this very day, Lord, so many are passed into eternity. And many are passing every day, Lord. And yet, Lord, with this coronavirus, it is highlighted, Lord, that there is a time when each one, Lord, must go to face you. And Lord, we thank you for the wonderful hope there is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is powerful. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation, unto everyone who believes. And Lord, we thank you that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And we pray, Lord, that the word of God would continue to take root in our hearts. And that, Lord, it would continue to be the only rule of faith under Christ our Lord. We pray tonight for DJ and the children, Naomi, Lord, and Nathan, and Bethany, and Leah, and we do pray, Lord, for Abigail and James. But, Lord, you would do what we can't, but you, Lord, would bring comfort and hope in their suffering and in their in their pain lord in their isolation lord and lord that you would show them that you have not left them but that you are still lord in the same place that you are the god who does not change we know these things to be true lord and we do pray on the basis lord of your covenant faithfulness that you would lord do as you have said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Lord, we pray that you would come to heal the broken hearts. You have said that you have come to heal the broken hearted, Lord. And Lord, we ask tonight that you would do that. And that you would do it in such a way, Lord, that would truly be tangible in the experience of those who are crushed by sorrow, crushed by, Lord, the loneliness, and isolation of the death of a loved one. Crushed, Lord, with the isolation from the community and family. We do plead with you, Lord, to make yourself known in these things. And our gracious God, we do pray for our nation, Lord, that there would be a turning to you, that there would be an understanding, Lord, that we have gone far from you, and that, Lord, there would be men and women, boys and girls seeking you. And we do ask, Lord, that you would take care of us as a congregation. We remember the elderly, the infirm, the, the, the young, Lord, those with underlying health issues. We pray for Christine tonight, who's not with us, but we remember her brother, Lord. She's asked us to pray for him. With MS and diabetes and epilepsy. And now, Lord, struggling with a drink problem. Dear Lord, have mercy on him. Have mercy on the family as they look upon him, Lord. And bring hope to him, Lord, in the revelation of your love and grace in Jesus Christ. So, Lord, continue with us, we pray. Help us, Lord, as we turn to your word. Minister to our hearts this evening. In the precious name of Jesus, with the forgiveness of all our sins, we ask it. For his sake, Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to read from the word of God in the Gospel of Matthew and a chapter 4. We've looked at this couple of times but we always see that there's something else in it gospel of matthew chapter 4 the temptation of jesus then jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and after fasting 40 days and 40 nights he was hungry and the tempter came to him and said if you are the son of god command these stones to become loaves of bread. 
But he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Amen. May the Lord bless to us that reading from his own precious and holy word, and to his own precious name, be all honour, praise and glory. So for a short while tonight, I want to think of the battle that our Lord had with Satan. One of the battles, because the life of Christ was really a battle all the way through. <clears throat> now, of the beginning of the, the earthly ministry of our Lord, because his ministry still continues in heaven as our high priest and intercessor, Satan fiercely attacked our Savior. And our Lord entered into the battle. And this battle took place immediately after the baptism of our Lord by John the Baptist. And of course it was immediately after the Father's declaration of Jesus as his beloved Son, hear you him. This is my beloved Son. With him I am well pleased. And it also was immediately after the Holy Spirit rested upon Jesus. Now this was a titanic battle. It was a truly fierce battle. The temptation of our Lord and the battle, of course, was decisively and emphatically won by our Saviour. And it showed, the, <coughs> excuse me, it showed the faith, the obedience, and the holy nature, character of our Lord. And it was decisive in showing that Satan was not going to stop the Lord's ministry, though he did try again and again. Now, I want to look tonight at three things regarding this battle. The first thing I'd like to look at is the region of the battle. The second thing I'd like to look at is the restriction in the battle. And the third thing is the rage of the battle. You know, Culloden is a, a very infamous battle in the history of the Highlanders. And uh, it's a, it was a very, very sad time. It's, I think, I may be wrong, but I think it's the only battle that no regiment in the British Army has on their battle honours. Now, the ground was chosen by Bonnie Prince Charlie. He was a, a Stuart, he, is he had the French spelling of Stuart, simply because in French, Stuart does not have a W, and uh, he just really made a mess of it, a total mess. He never listened to his advisors. The Lord George Murray was an, was an experienced uh, warlord and an experienced tactician. And the advice of Lord George Murray was 
that they retreat to Nairn, to the hills round Nairn, and that they or that they retreat and fight it out on the streets of Inverness. But no, Bonnie Prince, oh sorry, I've just noticed that Krisha's gone out of the meeting. Uh, apologies, Krisha. Uh, but no, Prince Charlie, he chose a charge on the ground at Culloden Mill. And it was absolutely reckless, but let's not be too hard on Prince Charlie. Let us not be too hard on him. Because I reflected on this, and I might be wrong, but I think he had an amazing confidence in the character, the courage, and in the famous Highland Charge. I really think he believed that he had the men to beat the butcher, but sadly it was not so. But that's what I want to think of, the region for this battle. It was the wilderness, the place where Christ was tempted. Uh, we read there was three great temptations from the devil. And two of them were told he was taken to the highest pinnacle of the temple and to the highest point of a great mountain. But the three great temptations in our text occurred at the end of the temptation battle, which went on for six weeks. And this was in the wilderness, the region for the battle was the wilderness. And now Jesus, we're told, was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Our Lord Jesus did not meet with temptation because he was disobedient, absolutely not. He is without sin, was without sin. Uh, a lot of temptation comes our way because of our own disobedience. He was without sin. For Jesus, however, this temptation came because the Holy Spirit led him into it. That does not mean that Christ was uh, was being uh, was being uh, treated in some way. Uh, sinisterly by his father, not at all. The temptation was to prove the honour, the dignity, the character, the holy nature of Christ. Now we may test something to show uh, that it's, it does what it says it does. We can test drive a car and find out that the spec was right. I've always been told when I'm testing a car, uh, take it up onto the road and give it totally at the top end and if there's anything going to go you'll hear it and you'll see it test, test it to the max and that's what I usually did with cars when I was buying them but this is what happened to Jesus in this encounter in the wilderness he was taken to the top end or perhaps we should say the bottom end of temptation, the very worst that Satan at this point was allowed to throw at him. And you stick it into the wilderness, a wilderness, a barren place. It's desolate of good things. But I know when I'm driving through Rannock Mill, I'm always amazed. It's spectacular. It's a beautiful place, although it's barren, but it's not the most barren wilderness. Jesus was led into a wilderness that was much more barren, much more desolate. And I would imagine that to live in a wilderness like uh, so often the Bedouins do, would be extremely hard. But the, the barrenness, the desolation of the region makes a great contrast to the beauty and the fruitfulness of the Garden of Eden, where Satan cunningly attacked Adam and Eve. The garden was a wonderful place. It was abounding in good things. And indeed, it was all good because God had said it was good. And yet Adam and Eve were totally beaten by Satan. And our Lord was attacked. Our Lord Jesus was attacked in the most difficult and desolate environment 
which gave Satan every advantage. You know, Bonnie Prince Charlie gave the butcher every advantage in the battle. And here, God allowed Satan, it seemed, to have every advantage. Now, Adam and Eve were defeated and fell into sin in a beautiful garden, which tells us that it's not our environment that ultimately determines what is good and bad. We're not going to argue here tonight against the benefits of a good environment, for there are indeed many. But it's a problem of the human heart, not a problem of our location, our setting, our circumstances, or indeed the region. We often talk about urban regeneration and renewal projects, and we applaud it. We really want it. We see the, the Lennox Town uh, regeneration project. Uh, we spoke about regeneration, and we spoke about renewal on Sunday evening, having problems uh, putting that up on YouTube, but it will go up by the grace of God. You know, we like to find suitable housing and homes for people, and but that's wonderful, and we want people to have the best, but that's not really what will sort the crime problem. Uh, many of the worst criminals uh, have been brought up in the most wonderful homes and environment. But the problem is, evil will turn the best places into a den of iniquity. But a godly spirit will transform people and a community. And we need the right regeneration of the Holy Spirit in our own lives, which we trust by the grace of God we have. But we look at our communities and we know that it's the regeneration of the Holy Spirit that will do the work. Now, a wilderness is often called, called a desert because it's pretty much a deserted place. And it emphasizes here that Christ was alone in regard to humans in the dwelling in the wilderness. It was a place of solitude. And we briefly spoke about solitude last night at our R2R group. Solitude is a difficult place and it can be a beautiful place. And we know as we go into the solitude of the, the closed door and the room and on our knees we can win victories. But we know that if we don't use the closed room and the closed door, that often we will see the result of that in our losses. And it's in, we're sort of in solitude in a way just now, in isolation, although not really in, in terms of what real solitude is. Uh, but it's in solitude that we find out who we really are. We need to be a praying, worshipping people in solitude, and we need to be a praying, worshipping people in public. So Jesus was faced with this titanic battle in the worst possible conditions at the time and alone. Powerful. So the region for the battle, the restriction for the battle, the condition of Christ for the battle was one which Satan had all the advantages, he had all the aces, but he was trumped. You know, you, you might hold an ace, your playing partner was, and you might hold the ace and have a grin on your face until somebody trumps you with a two. And it's really annoying when you see the lowest card in the pack beating your ace. And it seemed that Satan had all the power, but he was trumped in the weakness of Christ. The location gave Satan the advantage, but both the region for the belt and the restrictions emphasize clearly what God is teaching here, that Satan, with all his worst, with all his rage, anger, and with all his evil at his strongest, is no match for our God at his weakest. In the weakness of the humanity of Christ, Satan was soundly and completely beaten. 
Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The fasting was done on purpose because it was part of Christ's preparation. But not only was it part of his preparation, it was part of his battle because the temptation took place right through the fasting. It was to enable Christ to have the victory over temptation. And then afterwards we read, he was hungry. And actually the word means he was famished. He was starved. It's a very, very strong word. And, uh, you know, I remember the longest I've gone without food is about seven days. And uh, it was really weird. Uh, and everything, when I started eating, it was like super enhanced. Everything tasted and it was just like, why did this never taste like this before? But the famished state of our Lord and his victory over Satan shows what we've been saying, that God in his weakness is stronger than Satan at his strongest. And that's what I want to encourage us with tonight, friends. We, we're weak. We're weak. Jesus resisted sin up unto the shedding of blood, and he remained without sin. We, we don't resist temptation like that. Often we've given up long before it reaches that. We can't know the full power of the temptation until it touches, until we've defeated it. Now, I want to look at, finally, at our brief uh, final point, the rage in the battle, the final onslaught. There were three temptations, and these, these are the ones given to us, but the, the, the temptation was constant, and these were the, the worst that Satan could do. The Lord was tempt, uh, tempted by Satan in his ability and in his appetite. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. If you are, or since you are, basically prove your sonship, your identity. And it's not wrong for us to satisfy a lawful need. It would be, of course, very wrong if Christ had satisfied his hunger in a way that was not prescribed by God. It was not God's will. And therefore, it was absolutely clear that Christ was not going to go down that road. Jesus was there to do God's will, not his will. And that's often what we're faced with. We have the temptations, the battle of our wills. Our will and God's will. And it's when our will becomes God's will that we find the battle becomes easier. It's while our will is still wrestling with the will of God that the struggle is there. Jesus did not use his power to prove his identity. He did not use his power to satisfy his hunger. He trusted God as Father. And Jesus rebuked the devil with the word of God. And friends, we are to feed the hungry, and we must remember to feed the starving masses. I've sadly heard a very unbalanced uh, outlook where I've heard professing Christians say, we're not here to do social work. Indeed, we're not, but we are to obey Christ, who tells us to feed the hungry and to clothe the naked, to visit the sick and to visit the prisoners. Indeed, we need to feed those who are hungry, but we must never forget that spiritual food is even more important. It is food for the immortal soul. Jesus knew the word and he took authority over the devil through the word. That's what we must do. Not only quote it, because the devil can do that, and he can do it very well, although he twists it. He did it in the garden and he did it in the wilderness. It does them no good, but we must not only quote the word, we must trust it, and we must apply it, and we must comply with it. Now, the next temptation, the devil took him to the top of the pinnacle of the temple. It was the holy place. And, you know, 
can you see what's happening here? The devil can bring temptation to the people of God under the pretense of doing something that was holy. And it was a high place, the pinnacle. We need to be on our guard in the holy work of God and in the places God allows us to be in. If we have a high place, we need to be very careful that God has the highest place. And we need to trust God and uh, because it is in the highest places that the temptations can be strongest. He tempted Jesus to presume on God. And God honors faith, not presumption, because presumption is sin. Now, again, the word of God quoted. Jesus quoted it. And uh, you, shall, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. I probably said this before, but I, I read about a particular cult or sect in the United States that were taking their cars out on the highway and letting go of the wheel and saying, we trust Jesus. What on earth was that about? What a horrific distortion of the word of God. God wants us to use all lawful means to look after ourselves. And in this coronavirus outbreak in the world, you and I must be very careful to do that. Must be very careful to listen to doctors, to listen to people who perhaps know more than we do about these things in terms of uh, government and in terms of local authorities. We need to take advice. Now, the third, the second temptation, the same way the word of God was quoted by Christ, it was trusted, it was applied, and he complied with it. And these were the downfall of the tempter. The third temptation was not just a high place, but an exceedingly high place. He showed the kingdoms of the world. He shows the pleasures of sin, but he doesn't show the pain of sin. He doesn't show the consequences of sin or the sorrow of sin. He took Jesus to the highest place and the highest temptation. Because listen to this, he wanted Jesus to worship him because actually he wanted the highest place. He wanted to be God. What a revolting temptation. It was abhorred by the Lord and rebuked in, with the word of God, which not only rebuked Satan, but now commanded him, be gone away from me, Satan. He offers a lie by tempting the Lord to forsake his father's will, to forsake the cross. And this is what he does to the Christian. Do this, do that. But leave out Christ, leave out the cross. No. Listen to the Father and listen to his word. Solitude and separation are no guarantee of us that we're not going to be tempted. In fact, sometimes when we're separated and in solitude, the temptations can be fierce. Separation from the world is, however, a spiritual must. We must be in the world, but not of it. And in this time of isolation, May we be constantly looking to our Saviour, putting our hope and faith and confidence in him, trusting in his word, applying it and complying with it. So may the Lord bless his precious word to us. The region, the battle with Satan, the region of the battle, the restrictions in the battle and the rage in the battle. We're going to go into a time of prayer now. And what I think I'll do is I'll speak, I'll speak to everyone individually, and I'll let uh, I'll just unmute one person at a time, and I'll come down the list. Says Alex, sure, but I know that's Margaret really, so I'll unmute Margaret. Margaret, uh, prayer point, please. Get a pencil. Then. I'm not, we're not hearing you, Margaret. No. Still not hearing, love. 
I'm not quite sure what's going on. Can we go to Eric just now to see if we can hear Eric? Right, we'll go to Eric and come back to you, Margaret. Can you hear me, Eric? I've got to respond to that mute. Yeah, oh yeah. I can hear you. Good, okay, thanks, Eric. Uh, maybe uh, share anything to pray with, uh, pray about yourself and Diane, your, about your own situation, your family, and. Uh, how things are. Yeah. Mm. Just probably the lad along the road, but I think what's been in their mind the last few days is uh, Gemma, that's their, their, their niece, and she's been disqualified as a, a nurse in the, in the last about six months. Yeah. And that's her being put into the uh, physical, care. physical care ward for the COVID, so she's wow. off the beat. She's been transferred to the hospital in Pre Elizabeth and she's quite anxious about it. Right, yeah. Alec. But she started her training on, on Monday. Oh, oh well definitely we'll need to pray for Gemma. Uh, thanks for that. Thank you. Does she stay stay close to you or uh, it did not so so far, yeah. So far, yeah. Um, yeah, stays from mum ten minutes away. Uh -huh. What about your mum uh, uh, Diane? She, she's good, thank you, Alec, and she thanks you all for her, her, your prayers. Okay, that's wonderful. And yourself, how are you coping? Oh, yes, Alec, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm enjoying walks every day, like all close to the dog, so that's, that's <laughs> been a, a blessing. That has been a blessing. I've really enjoyed it, set me up for the day. So it's it, it's been nice, Alec. I haven't fallen out yet. <laughs> <laughs> And how's Sam's golf coming on? No, I think it's, it's, it's good, it's good. It's handicapped. <coughs> and, and I managed, I like to speak with Susan on Sunday night. She oh, phoned yeah. and I was telling her you were trying to get through. But she says sometimes the phone works and sometimes it doesn't. It but she's cost? asking. Yeah. Susan's asking for us all. Oh, well, we'll try again. She was constantly engaged. Well, not her number, but the, the, the home the number. Home Susan. number. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Oh, well, thank you. What about your friend uh, Alistair? Uh, no, no other feedback. Much, 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 much the same. I don't think there's an expectation of improvement now. But... Mm -hmm. oh, well, we'll pray for Alistair. And Ross and Haley and Malachi, they're keeping safe and well. Oh, yes, they're yes, safe. They're safe. Thank you. Just missing them all. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, be assured we're, we're very much got all the families in the church in our prayers every day we're thinking of you all so we thank god that we have that blessing uh okay let me see who's next uh, i'm going to go to I'm go if you can switch yourself off eric i'll go to angus and ishbel hi angus ishbel how are you <laughs> Uh, hi. Uh, you're wearing matching tops. Yeah. <laughs> Is that mum's? <laughs> that mum's work. <coughs> what should we be praying about tonight? Making, uh, I got a delivery yesterday, uh, 10 sets of scrubs to make for a hospital in, in Dundee. Marvellous. So uh, it's given me something to do. Mm -hmm. It does some sweat to do. And a wonderful help for the effort against the, the virus. Yeah, we should get more next week. So oh, wonderful, Ishbel. Well done indeed. Uh, what about yourself, Angus? How's the studies going? Hmm? I just wasn't on. I'm um, since the past. Few weeks really. Uh -huh. um, that PhD is getting closer and closer. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. We'll play that one too. <laughs> well done. And, uh, I think I'm just seeing a sample, really. Yeah. Okay, thank you. If there's nothing else, we'll move on to... Okay. Nothing else? No? How's it going? I was seeing uh, Katrina. She's, she's okay. Good. Yeah, I spoke to Katrina the other day. Yeah. Mike had hoped to join us last night, but he had arrived that late. Oh, good. And what about Nora? Uh, I'm not seeing her at all. Um, mm. she's, as far as I know, she's well. She's keeping okay. Good. She's going kind to of care going in, and I think her son's going in as well. Marvellous. Marvellous. Walter. Yeah. Because he said um, Christine was asking for prayer for her. Uh, it's her her step brother. He's got I can't you know I can't remember. I know her brother's names, but I can't remember. Did she say Derek or Andrew? Uh, he's got MS. He's got epilepsy. He's got diabetes, and you know he's very 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 depressed. Uh, and I know Andrew has epilepsy, but I don't know about sorry. The other stuff. I know Andrew has epilepsy, but I don't know if he has yeah, that's, it, yeah. Well, it, it will be Andrew then. It's Andrew. Right. Okay. Yeah, we'll pray for him. Yeah. It's, it's a very, very sad situation because he's only young, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, well. Thanks, Angus. I'm going to go to Colin now. Hi, Colin. Oh, hi. Uh, how's yourself and the folks in your eyes up in Sandy? Yeah, we're, we're all fine. There's no signs of anything in Jura yet. Good. Uh, the community there are, are very thankful that the community's all working together over there. So oh, if more of us need to go out now or mm -hmm. uh, to get our, our, our shopping and things delivered. So she's quite relieved at that. Oh, marvellous. Uh -huh. And you're coping okay with the lockdown yourself? No, no problem to me. No. It doesn't make a great deal of difference to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have to be locked down for some time now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for that. We'll pay. We'll our our, our neighbour next door uh, lost his lost his mother. I was telling you. Oh, you were telling me yesterday. He was a bit. Uh, uh, there's a couple of people we've heard of now. So yeah. It's just to pray for the folk who have, who have lost. Yeah. Next door. What about the, the oh, we were praying for the lad in Falkirk, his family. Uh, right. Uh, have you heard any uh, anything on that situation? I don't know. His mother's in Jura. His mother's in Jura, yeah. Yeah, and his family, I think, are, uh, uh, I think they're coping okay. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, Very sad though, the young guy, young family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Colin. We're going to go to Krisha. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't. I've just realised, Margaret, that you're signing in, and it's. Oh, I forgot. It was my name, but maybe you might be able to get it with your iPod Touch. But I'll I'll, un, I'll unmute that, uh, Krisha. Can you hear me, Krisha? Yeah, uh -huh. uh, how are you? How are you doing, love? Uh, I'm fine, uh -huh. Um Maybe you could remember Stephen, my nephew. Yeah. Um, he's his friend in the hospital where he is um, was admitted to Fort Valley with COVID nineteen. <laughs> However, um, after a couple of days in the hospital, discovered that he didn't have it after all. Right. So he's back with Stephen in this hospital again oh dear. but they've, they've none of them allowed out so my sister's concerned about Stephen you know because um, they used to get 15 minutes out in the grounds you know to walk around yeah but they're not allowing them out at all now uh, that oh, must very very hard as well not to get outside mm -hmm. i'm sorry about and james and uh, laura and chris are doing okay uh, Fine. Yes, thanks. Uh, oh, well, give it, give them all our regards to them. Yeah, thanks. Is there anything else? Mm -hmm. It's all for me. Okay, nice. Oh, well, we'll see if we can mute this. Now, I'm going to your iPod now, Margaret. iPod touch. 
Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, and I can yeah. hear you. Oh, that's well cool. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, Ian, I can hear you loud and clear. So you know how you know how to preach on Sunday through Margaret's iPad. Yeah. Any prayer points for your family? Uh, no, I think they're all well, thanks. Um, John Donalda, uh, Derek and Laura. Yes. Remember mm -hmm. uh, Gabriel and Deborah. Yes. Uh, Uganda. Yeah. Um, Gabriel and Deborah. Yeah, very, very difficult over in the third world. Gabriel and Deborah. Precious. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else, Ian? Sorry? <laughs> Uh, anything else? I, I don't know. I, I've just been busy in the house and uh, yeah. been um, getting rid of all piles of old paperwork. Oh. And I had for Maxwell House. I'm glad I've got the Maxwell House now. But <laughs> that was a uh, yeah. country's even type home, you know. So well, um, I, I think pretty rough. And I can imagine some of these homes. Yeah. You know, with a uh, loss of. Lots of folk. Horrible, um, actually. So, yeah. It's not, <clears throat> I, I just I, remember the, these homes. Yeah. I spoke to Jill uh, the other day as well, and she was telling me that she's got friends who are in the home and it's, uh, that were working in the home, and it's not entirely clear uh, the story about the home in Lennoxtown. But still, there's an awful lot of folks have died in it, so we, we need to be praying about that. Uh, oh well, uh, I've got my family here. I've got my sister, Jean, Anne, and Janet. Uh, do you want to ask for prayer, Jean? Can you hear me? Anything to pray for, Jean? In your frozen. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. Control. Gotcha. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah. What shall we be praying? Yeah. Well, obviously for um, the spirit of comfort and peace to be with DJ and the children and all that. Absolutely. <laughs> that was really hard time. That God would God's comfort would come really close to them. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for that, Jean. Just, uh, I, I, I've assured you that as a congregation, we've been constantly remembering it. And it's good that we can come to the Father. Uh, what about you, Anne? Can you hear me? Will I get you? Uh, where's Anne? Yeah. Janet. Okay, Janet. Janet, can you hear Hi. me? Yes, I can hear you. What should we um, be praying about, please? Well, I was speaking to Harriet the other day and she just asked for prayer for family and extended family. She never said any specifics, but yeah. said she would appreciate prayer. Yeah. Um, that I haven't spoken to her in ages, but I've been speaking all the time to Jamie and to Martin. Mm -hmm. Might give her an email, yeah. Mm -hmm. She just said much prayer, so I mean, I've been holding her up. But, okay, uh, I bet I'll, I'll, in fact, I'll contact her tonight. I'll contact her mm -hmm. tonight, yeah. I, thanks for that, said, yeah. Well, I just said, you know, we pray for her and that. Uh -huh. um, and perhaps pray that the government would sort out her money. Oh, um, no that the boss would pay our wages. I know, that's terrible. We will oh, be paying. It'll get there, somebody's been messaging me just before you started offering to buy frogs of Christopher. He said at least you'll have something coming in, so that was nice. That was cool. It's Christopher, Christopher's obviously not getting out in the boat. 
No, we went out for a wee wander today in it, but he was going to go out tomorrow fishing and he's trying to rope me into it. Mm -hmm. Well, be a good day out if we get it. I want to stay for safety. Yeah. I'll probably be nervous out in the boat when we're fishing. Okay. And, uh, and obviously, DJ, that's yeah. which you are. Thank you. Well, we're, we're going to begin praying now, and I'm going to mute everyone except the people praying. Just a wee prayer point for my own family. Uh, my grandson Scott was 10 years old the other day, and I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, my daughter Ashley was having an awful, awful difficult time with, with just terrible people in the community. Uh, so a 15-year-old attacked Scott one of this family and hurt him so it's really really not good so please pray for protection for scott and his mum in this place his dad lives about 20 miles from so i also was really upset because he's on lockdown but we'll pray and please remember dj very much so on the kids i'm going to ask ian to pray and then uh, I'm going to ask Eric and then Angus and myself all finish and then we'll finish with an item of praise. Okay, so I'm going to mute everyone except Ian. Okay, and you're on the Vodafone Ian or Margaret's iPod? Uh, Margaret's iPod. Ah, uh, you're fine, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Almighty and ever blessed Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity of gathering together in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We rejoice, O Lord, that we pray to uh, the, our God who is enthroned in the majesty above, our God to whom nothing is impossible, uh, that nothing is strange or unknown to him. You are our God, our maker, our creator. You know the end from the beginning. And the Lord God, we thank you that it is so, <clears throat> that you are the God who is able, in, in whose hands, O oh Lord, uh, all of time is, all of the, the things and the happenings in this world, you know all about them, and you're aware of them. We know, O oh Lord, that uh, <clears throat> these things are coming up on the earth, when you have said that mm. uh, these things are the beginning of sorrows. And the Lord, we pray that you would keep your people safe in these times and strengthen them. And as they face some difficult things, it will happen to them. And, but the Lord, we see folk, uh, there are always difficult things in life that we see uh, that in, um, in the lives of many, and we've been thinking about them tonight, of folk who have, um, folk who have, uh, constant uh, problems and it seems problem upon problem mm. but the Lord we bring them to you and seek your blessing upon them mm. we think about uh, Kirstine's brother Andrew for example mm. he has so, so many things uh, to bother him and to, to be a problem to him and other folk as well that some face big issues and others mm. seem to face a series of issues but the Lord, we pray that, and we know, Lord, that you are able to help and to strengthen and to be with all who are in such circumstances. And Lord, we pray, we pray for those who mourn this day and remember 